The coronavirus has disproportionately affected Latinos and blacks, according to data from the CDC. Our Heather Sell spoke with Reverend Gabriel Salguero, the president of the National Latino Evangelical Coalition, to talk about how it is affecting Latinos and their churches. Yeah, it's so interesting. Talk about what is the conversation like in Latino churches right now in regards to COVID? Why do Latinos think the rates are so much higher and what are they doing to combat this pandemic? Well, I think first is that we're trying to do the pastoral care and come alongside people. As you said, we are disproportionately impacted uh, by COVID-19. In New York City, a pastor of our coalition lost nine parishioners. The Assemblies of God, uh, Spanish Eastern District Superintendent affected. We lost several pastors in New Jersey and Florida and across the country. And so our major focus right up front is to take care of people, make sure we're providing pastoral care, comfort, coming alongside people, even as, as, as they're being impacted. And as you say, part of that is because many Latino communities have pre-existing conditions, sometimes called comorbidity realities like diabetes, hypertension. And so that reality makes them more susceptible to the COVID-19 virus. Mm. Well, Pew Research also shows that the Hispanic unemployment rate has spiked during the pandemic, especially among Latino women. Are you seeing this in your churches and, and how are you responding? Yeah, I think that that is actually spot on. And I, the reason that is is because many of them work in the impacted areas. For example, I live in Orlando and Disney has been closed for a long time. So a lot of people who work in Disney, a lot of people who work in supermarkets, truck drivers who are frontline workers, uh, have been either fur furloughed or temporarily let go because of COVID-19. And so that impact of, of, of unemployment or furlough really impacted the church, not just the families, but uh, also the communities, the church communities where, where uh, people, because of their unemployment or underemployment, um, can't move around, uh, can't pay their mortgage, can't pay their rent. And so the church has been responding uh, by bringing food, by food drives, by food pantries, by helping people with their mortgage. In any way we can, we've been a source of help and support. Hmm. And of course, this is all uh, coming down hard on pastors who are trying to think about all the different needs for their congregations. How do you see the pandemic affecting them? Look, one of the things we need to really focus is on who cares for the caregiver. Uh, exhaustion, sometimes called compassion fatigue. Uh, sometimes people think that pastors are working less because of COVID-19, they're working from home, but actually they're doing more. They're doing uh, counseling on Zoom or on Skype or on, on Google Meets. They're, they're meeting with more people. Plus more people are demanding prayer because they lost someone. Uh, I myself had to officiate a, a virtual funeral or had to go to a funeral where only 10 people can go. And so what we need to focus is on making sure pastors are rested, making sure those caregivers, those deacons come alongside. So it's a, it's a community-wide response to COVID-19, not just the pastor. Hmm. This pandemic, of course, has caused suffering on so many levels, but I'm also wondering how have you seen the Lord at work um, in your churches during this time? What have been perhaps some of the, the blessings even amidst the grief and loss? Yeah, it, well, I just worked on a book with about 20 evangelical leaders called Arise Together. And what I've seen is that in the midst of this suffering, you see real resurrection people stepping forward, helping their neighbors. I've seen the church be more on the front lines with feeding, more on the front lines with helping healthcare workers, truck drivers, more on the front lines, especially with the elderly, shopping for them, having young people come and bring their groceries in safe ways. And so the church has been the church. And if anything, I think we may see a revival after this whole COVID-19 dies. The church may surprise us and, and we may come out stronger, if that's possible, than even when we went in. All right. And we are going to end on that note. Reverend Salguro, thanks so much for your time. Thank you.